up guys? Thank you very much for coming along with this technical product overview slash review of the 3D Connection CAD mouse which I've tried to spin into picture with dramatic effect and failed miserably. What I'm hoping to do in this video is answer all the questions which you might have which I had when I first saw that this thing existed. I already had a mouse like I'm sure you do which you've replaced. You've replaced your standard mouse with three buttons with something more fancy like a Logitech or a Microsoft mouse or even a gaming mouse because it's got more buttons that you can bind into CAD functions. You've already done that and then this thing comes along and you're probably thinking what can this do that my existing mouse can't do because this is quite late to the game. This needs to do something quite special in order for you to replace the very expensive mouse that you've already bought with another quite expensive mouse which you're going to need to buy. So we're going to look at what it does, what its benefits are, where it shines and excels. We're going to be looking at the hardware and the software side of this mouse. So just to address the elephant in the room as well, I know this is a technical video and the technical quality of this video itself is dreadful. I know that we're using a webcam with very little natural light. In fact, I am being lit <laughs> from two monitors with Windows Explorer widescreen open. That's where my light is coming from. I know this is dreadful, but that's kind of not the point and shouldn't be important. But anyway, without wasting any more time, let's look at the product itself and jump straight into it. So I think the first thing we'll do, but not dwell on too much, is the packaging that the product comes with. And what I'll say about the packaging is that it's quality and professional. It's obviously not aimed at consumers. It's aimed at the business end of the market. So it doesn't need to be frilly and fancy, but it's professional and it does the job. It feels solid and it feels quality. Now, obviously the mouse isn't in here. I've had it out for about six or seven weeks. So the mouse is not in here, but you see it comes wrapped in a sort of plastic shell. Uh, with the cable nicely wrapped internally and on the external of the packaging you've got a couple of pictures of the product itself front view of the mouse and then on the back you've got the mouse itself with its major selling points listed uh, with the bullet points here so what we've got are, well I'll have a look at the, the mouse itself in a bit but we've got two thumb buttons here we've got a macro button middle wheel and then we've got the three finger buttons here and that's one of the major selling points is this button here which is the middle mouse button so we're going to look at that left button, middle button, and then right button. So that's the packaging that it comes with. And what we'll do now is the physical product tour. So let's get right into it and do the overview of the physical hardware itself. Now, this is my mouse as it sits on the desk. The video you're looking at now isn't live because the natural light in the room isn't good enough to be able to show you the product as it sits on the desk. But this is recorded footage from a, a week or so ago. So in terms of physical hardware, you're probably looking at this going, it doesn't look anything special. It doesn't look like something I should go out and spend a lot of money on because it doesn't look like it does anything different to what I've already got right now. And you're probably right. You're probably right. It doesn't innovate anywhere in terms of hardware. And how can it? If someone was to ask you to design a mouse for CAD, what could you realistically put on it to make it stand out from just your normal gaming mouse? So... With regards to my opinions and my point of view and perspective, the mouse which I was using up until this point was this one here. It was the Razer Naga 2014 gaming mouse. Now, people's opinions differ on the Razer brand. Personally, I've had absolutely no problems with this mouse. I've had that Naga for well over a year, and it's been absolutely solid and sound. In terms of a device, it's been 100% reliable, and it is in the same price bracket to the CAD mouse. So it is a comparable product. So that's what I've been using up until now. And my opinions are, I guess, in some way, based on a comparison between that one and the CAD mouse. So I'm not coming from a really cheap old Dell mouse or an HP mouse, or, you know, the kind of mouse you get bundled for free with a PC. I am not comparing this mouse to one of those. So that's kind of where my perspectives are coming from. The hardware of the mouse, right? What we've got is we've got the two thumb buttons here. We've got the 3D connection macro button, a middle wheel, and then three buttons on the front. We've got the left button, middle button, and we've got the right button. Nothing special there at all. There's no innovation there. Nothing to get excited about or to shout about. The feel of the product though, the feel of the mouse is something worth noting. I don't know if it's intentional by 3D connection or not, but the, the way this mouse feels in your hand is, it, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make a song and dance about it, but it does feel premium. It feels really nice. And the reason for that is we've got three different materials in one sitting. We've got the hard plastic textured finish on the top. And that's, it's kind of, it is smooth, but you can feel the texture in it. We've got the rubber coating here on the thumb rest. So this is like a smooth ribbed rubber coating. And then you've got the brush, is it brush? 
Yeah, it is. it's like a brushed aluminium effect ring running around the bottom of the mouse. So you've got three completely different contrasting materials in a one product which your hand rests on. So you've got three different materials in your hand at one point in time. And you can feel that. You really can feel that. You can feel the cold metal at the bottom base of your palm of your hand as it hits this bit here. And then you've got the rubber under your thumb and then you've got the hard plastic under your fingers and the palm of your hand around here. And that just feels nice. I wouldn't play on it too much, but it does feel nice. We've got the, the braided cable running out the front of the mouse. Now, most mice have a like a, a hard rubber or a plastic cable running out the front, which is it gets easily snagged on you know, monitor stands and other things you've got sitting around on your desk. It can tie in knots easily. The braided cable is a good solution to get rid of that problem. Now, the gaming mouse, which I've come from, the Razer Naga, also did have a braided cable. You can see that running out the front. So that does seem to be the, the sort of industry standard now for high-end mice is to have that braided cable running out the front. So what you're watching now is revision two of the video. <laughs> I did this video 24 hours ago and then I pulled it and I've recreated just this segment and added this little segment in. And I've done that for a reason. I glossed over, in the original video, revision one of this video that I put out, I glossed over a feature which 3D Connection claimed to be one of the biggest selling points of the mouse. But however, I glossed over it and sort of dismissed it. And I did that for a reason. However, I'm reevaluating that decision because I based my review, and I still do, obviously, basing my review on my own opinions and my own use case of the mouse. However, the mouse does apply and does appeal to a lot of other users who have different use cases. And the feature that I've glossed over could be and probably will be more useful to other people. So it is worth me just mentioning this feature a little bit more, but also giving my opinions on it. So I've said up until this point that the mouse doesn't innovate in any way really in terms of hardware and it, it I kind of stand by that because we're, we're talking specifically about the middle mouse button here. Um, 3D Connection have said that this is one of the major reasons why they've introduced the CAD mouse, why they've done it, is because CAD users over the course of their working day will excessively use the middle wheel button as a click to pan whilst they're, whilst they're working and other CAD, sorry, other mouse manufacturers don't really recognise that and um, it can be ergonomically unfriendly to press the middle wheel on a regular basis throughout the course of a working day. So that's why the middle mouse button is in there. So why I glossed over this is because, is because first of all, I'm not an end user, really. I'm not, I don't work on project work. I don't work on billable work. Um, I don't do drones. I'm just a teacher, really. That's all I do. I'm a consultant. So I don't have the same use case as everybody else. Secondly, I did try to use this middle button on a regular basis. I tried my hardest to get used to it, but I couldn't. That might just, again, be me and my personal circumstances, my own sort of train of thought, my own brain training type thing. But what I found, in even, even today, even after 3D Connection got in touch with me and said, hey, why didn't you go over this more. And don't get me wrong, they have not, I categorically need to make this absolutely abundantly clear, they have not asked me to pull the video and put something new and I've done this completely of my own accord after after careful consideration. But even once, whilst I was emailing the guy back and I was typing on the keyboard and moving my hand back to the mouse and I was saying to him, look, it's really difficult to get used to this three button thing. I was moving my hand back to the mouse and just instinctively, my hand was going back to the two button position index finger on the left mouse button, middle finger on the right mouse button. And I had to constantly, consciously shuffle my hand back into three button position. The three button position being your index finger on this button, the left button, your middle finger on the middle button, and then your ring finger on the right button. That's not a natural, I'm saying natural, right? I mean, caveman didn't have a mouse, right? So we're not like primevally coded to use a mouse. It doesn't work like that, obviously. But after... After 20 years of using mice and doing it too much, 20 hours a day, 14 hours a day, a lot a lot of the day, every day for 20 years, you, you do develop habits. And my habit is index finger and middle finger on the mouse with the ring finger sort of just resting against the mouse pad. Or, you know, it, it that's your natural position when using a mouse. And it just became instinct to go to that position. Now... When you consciously shuffle your fingers into the three button position to suit the, how this mouse is intended to be functioned, you still want to use the middle wheel. Your instinct is still to go to the middle wheel when you scroll. So your ring, sorry, your index finger will go to the middle wheel to scroll 
and then when you want to use pan it's instinctive again just to press that middle wheel whilst your finger's already there it is extreme i can't it's difficult to explain it without you sort of trying it yourself but it's really difficult to split those functions because we're his historically all we've been doing is pressing the middle wheel to pan and then scroll with the same finger scroll pan scroll pan with one finger on the on the wheel to then split that to scroll with the index finger and then press the middle mouse button with your middle finger on that button was really difficult to get used to and if you're consciously trying to do it it is doable it really is doable but then when you fall back into autopilot mode it becomes quite difficult to to break that habit however if you're an autocad user i can see this being very useful i can see if i was an autocad user only using autocad and i didn't have that much of a use to zoom in i mean autocad users do zoom in and zoom out with the scroll wheel on a regular basis by all means they do that but they will pan more than me so it may be a lot easier for an autocad user to develop a new habit of using that middle mouse button more than it was for me so the reason why i didn't emphasize that button enough in the first revision of this video that i put out was because i personally couldn't get used to that middle mouse button and i didn't feel even though that even though 3d connection have said quite clearly that this is one of the biggest reasons they've done the cad mouse i honestly didn't find that particular feature to be a justification to buy in this mouse I feel its strengths are in other areas and those strengths are greater than this middle mouse button. So that was the reason why I glossed over it. Um, but I do feel that it does need a bit of emphasis and that is, I guess, it can appeal to a lot of other people with different use cases to what I've had. And I think the way this mouse is meant to be intended to work as well is you press the middle mouse button with your middle finger and if you're trying to move yourself away from using the scroll wheel, what you could do is use the thumb buttons to zoom in and zoom out. The, the thumb buttons that you can see here, which I'll, uh, I'll get a better view of them, these two buttons here. So these thumb buttons, by default, they are called quick zoom buttons. That's their default mapping. The forward thumb button, it does a quick zoom in. So it'll do like a, an automatic staggered zoom. It'll do a jump zoom in. And then the thumb back button, this one here, is a quick zoom out. So in theory, you could use those buttons to zoom in and out instead of the wheel, and then use the middle mouse button as a pan instead of the wheel, completely eliminating the need for the wheel. However, however, again, this is just my personal opinion. I find, or I found that these thumb buttons were much, much more useful when you bound them to do something else other than zoom. They're too accessible to be used for something as mundane as a zoom. I'm saying mundane because we're all used to using the wheel for a zoom. So keep the wheel for a zoom. And then I found that binding these thumb buttons to do something more useful was the way to go. So it was with that in mind that I found it even more difficult to get used to that middle mouse button. So that was the thing. So in conclusion, so in conclusion, I'm going to now wrap up this additional segment that I've added in. The middle mouse button, yes, it is definitely a good feature for anybody that does excessively pan on a daily basis and has the capability and the willingness to break a habit of how they hold and use a mouse. But I personally didn't feel that it was enough to justify replacing the existing mouse that I was using with this just on that strength alone. I found that, yes, I will be replacing the mouse, the mouse that I use, the Razer Naga, with this mouse. I'll be completely replacing it because its strengths, this mouse, it has strengths in other areas over and above the uh, the middle wheel button. So another thing that I want to draw attention to, and you might think this isn't a big deal, but it kind of is when it comes to using a mouse, is the underside of the card mouse in comparison with the gaming mouse that I've been using. So if you look at the gaming mouse underside, you've got these contact pads. All, obviously all mice have contact pads on the underside of them, but the gaming mouse has large, flat contact pads, whereas the card mouse has rounded, curved contact pads. And what that translates to is less friction and resistance 
against the mouse pad. Now, it, it needs to be said that I am using the 3D connection mouse pad, which is a separate item. It's a separate purchase. It doesn't come with the mouse, but this mouse pad is like a hard plastic textured mouse pad as opposed to fabric. The benefits of a plastic mouse pad is that with fabric, you can have snags between the mouse contact pads and the fabric. We've probably all experienced that. I know I have when the mouse snags against the fabric mouse pad. You don't get that with, with this mouse pad. Apparently, 3D Connection do say that the CAD mouse has been engineered with this mouse pad in mind. And to be honest, you can feel that. So I've got the CAD mouse and the gaming mouse side by side here. With the CAD mouse, like I said, you've got less friction, less contact area between the contact pads and the mouse pad. The mouse feels lighter. It feels more fluent. It feels more specific. You can be more precise with your mouse cursor. And that is really useful in the world of CAD because in CAD, you're picking pixel width lines, edges, points, very small entities, and you need to be specific and precise with your mouse cursor. And the less resistance your mouse is giving you when you try to pick these small entities, the better, and you can really feel that. So this is the, the 3D Connection CAD mouse against the hard plastic mouse pad. It's smooth and it's fluent. Now I'm using the gaming mouse, and you can see there's a lot, it, it does feel, and it does look, you can see the jerkiness of the mouse as it's running along because there's more friction between that mouse and the mouse pad. And now back to the CAD mouse. It's a lot more smoother and a lot more precise. It might not make that much of a difference to a lot of people. People might not notice that kind of thing, but it does feel a lot nicer to use the CAD mouse with that mouse pad. And I think it is worth mentioning here a downside of the CAD mouse. It's not something which I would say is a turn off for a purchase at all under any circumstances, but something to be aware of. I've been using this mouse here for well over a year, probably too much for about a year. And then I've been using this mouse only for the last six weeks. But you can clearly see the bottom of the CAD mouse looks a lot more dirty than the bottom of the gaming mouse. So there's a design issue here, which I think they need to address in a future revision. You can see that there's a lot of dirt build up here. There's a lot of fabrics which have accumulated between the, this sort of like a grooved edge or like a lip running around the contact pads. So you, all you need to do is just clean the mouse on a regular basis just to stop and prevent this from building up too much. But um, fortunately, it's not anywhere near the contact surface, so it shouldn't make any difference, but nobody wants a dirty mouse. So that's something which uh, needs to be taken into consideration. So you're probably thinking at this point, it looks good, looks well made, but I need something more. I need something more to justify spending this kind of money to replace the mouse that I've got, because I've had no complaints with the mouse that I've got right now. So that's where we we'll move on to the final stage of this overview and the software that comes with the mouse. Now the software that comes with this mouse allows you to do things which you cannot do with the mouse that you've got now. And I guess that needs some sort of explanation because you're probably thinking, well, the mouse that I've got now, I can press the thumb button. That'll then press, you know, I can map the thumb button to the letter E or the letter S and it'll start a sketch or it'll do an extrusion. I can do this. I don't need anything more. Well, you might not, but this software will allow you to do things which you can't do right now. And it's up to you whether or not you think that that's worth the price or not. So the software team are absolutely genius. The 3D Xware uh, driver that comes with the mouse is now combined between all 3D connection devices. So if you've got a 3D mouse, it's the same software application that controls the 2D standard mouse to the 3D mouse. So within here, you can change the sensor speed, you can change the sensor accuracy, mouse acceleration, scroll speed, all that kind of stuff. But, but, the party piece is the buttons. And this is literally mind blowing. I had to do a double take when I first saw this stuff because I thought, not only did I think, why has nobody thought of this before? But I thought, this just opens up a whole realm of possibilities. The mouse driver, not only does it allow you to integrate with commands, but it integrates into the API of your CAD application. So you're not pressing keyboard shortcuts. Your mouse buttons are going to call functions from the application itself rather than keyboard shortcuts. Not only that, but the mouse software is context sensitive. If you can see here, I can change what each button does based on what environment I'm currently in within the CAD application. Currently I'm in part design, so I can have all of these buttons on the mouse do something completely different when I'm in part mode. And now if I jump into a sketch, go back to the driver, I can now change the buttons to do something completely different based on now that I'm in a sketch, that is mind blowing. That is absolutely mind blowing because at the moment your mouse, you can have the thumb button bound to E, but when you're in a sketch, 
the button E is going to take you out of a sketch and do an extrusion. You might want that button to do something completely different. You might want to draw a circle. You might want to project geometry. You might want to do move, copy, rotate, anything because you're in a different environment. Each environment has its own different commands and you can now have each button do a command based on what environment you're in and it'll automatically switch the mouse to know what environment you're currently in. That is mind-blowing. That is so good. It opens up infinite amounts of customization possibilities. So we can finish the sketch, we can then jump into a, an assembly, and then the mouse driver will detect that you're now in an assembly, and you can now change all of these buttons to do something completely different again. So not only that, we've got the we've got the 3D connection button which sits below the middle wheel. Now, I haven't said what this does yet, but it's an RM function, which is a radial menu. Now, when you press that button here, this happens. You get this radial menu come up. Now, this I guess the the shock factor, the, the the shock and awe of that has sort of dwindled a little bit because Inventor natively now has radial menus built into it. So we've already got this functionality. However, the radial menu now extends into other applications. So for example, if you were to open up uh, Windows Explorer, the radial menu will work in Windows Explorer. So you can have this do something specific based on Windows Explorer, like new folder or go forward, go back properties of a file, that kind of thing. And then when you're in Inventor, the radial menu has now got Inventor shortcuts on their Inventor commands. And again, that's context sensitive. If you're in a sketch, you can have different radial menu options appear in there over and above what Inventor presents you by default on its radial menu. So that radial menu button is quite useful. You can customize and make your own by going into the, the radial menu shortcut, radial menus, and then you can say, I want to create a new radial menu. And then each one of these one, two, three, four options, you can have a different command per radial quadrant. For the other buttons, so these ones here, for example, we're in an assembly. These, this is the thumb button forward and the thumb button back. At the moment, it's doing a perspective view and then an orthographic view. These are things you can't do with keyboard shortcuts. There is no keyboard shortcut for orthograph, orthographic and perspective modes. So if we select the options here, the mouse software has detected that we're using Inventor. We can select this drop down list, and this is where it's integrating with the API. And we can now call literally any assembly function from the API. So, annotation, analysis, 3D grips. We've got content center, design accelerators, frame generator commands. We've got tools, everything. Almost, I, I can't verify that literally everything is there, but it looks like almost everything is in there. Every command you can possibly want in Inventor can now be mapped to a button based on what environment you're in. So we can then go back to, for example, sketch mode. So we can say, let's jump into a sketch. Let's configure the driver for sketch mode. And then we can configure the thumb button back to do a sketch command for, uh, I don't know, draw a line, for example, close. And now when I press the thumb button back, we can draw a line. Simple, but extremely effective. And that thumb button draws a line in sketch mode, but then when I exit the sketch, the thumb button will now do something completely different based on the context that I'm currently in. That is something which I think is worth the money for this mouse alone. It will take some time to configure the mouse and customize it to how you want it, but this is a purchase which will last a long time. It's a well-built bit of kit, and I think if you invest the time in configuring it to how you want it to work, you can get some real-term, real-life productivity gains from customizing this to how you want it. So with that in mind, I think that sums it up. That's about all I need to cover with this mouse. Overall, it is a superb bit of kit. In terms of physical hardware, just in conclusion, it doesn't innovate. It's still just a mouse with some buttons on it, not as many buttons as available in other devices, but the software that comes with the mouse sets it apart from everything else in the world of CAD. It doesn't just work with Inventor, you can configure it to work in AutoCAD as well. So if we jump back over to the drivers, you can see the driver has recognized that we're in AutoCAD. If I just jump back into context of AutoCAD, and then we can then hook into AutoCAD and access the commands from AutoCAD. I don't know what the integration's like with other CAD applications, the likes of SolidWorks, Pro Engineer, Katia. I'm not sure. I'm sure those guys have worked on that and there will be integration into those as well. But speaking specifically from Inventor and AutoCAD, the integration is pretty tight. It's as tight as you can realistically get it. So one thing as well that I haven't spoke of too much, and it is a selling point of the mouse, is the middle wheel button. Now the middle wheel button 
does a pan in Inventor. So instead of pressing the middle wheel itself, you've got the middle mouse button, which will act as the replacement for pressing down the middle wheel. Personally, from my point of view, I don't think that that's a selling point of the mouse. I think it's, I wouldn't call it a gimmick, but I would say that it's not enough any or anywhere near enough to justify the price point of this mouse. I think the software alone is though. All right, finally, uh, just a couple of things that I forgot to add into the main body of the video, which I don't know why I forgot, because I use these quite a lot. Uh, these are good things as well, from my point of view, subjective. Some people might not like that this is here and isn't here. The middle wheel itself doesn't have a left or a right click. On some modern mice, if you were to move the wheel to the left and to the right, it'll click and give you two extra buttons. This mouse doesn't have that, and I think that's a good thing personally, because the button itself can wear down over time. So sometimes on those mice that does have that function, if you scroll the wheel or press it down, it can accidentally hit the left or the right click, and that is quite annoying when that happens. So it's a good thing that it doesn't have that. And finally, the middle wheel itself, if you've got a lot of content to scroll and you just find yourself scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and sort of, I want to say you're wearing your finger down by any stretch of the imagination, but it can be quite tiresome just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. If you are to move the middle wheel fast, like in a flick action, and then let go of the wheel, It'll scroll fast, but then suddenly come to a gradual stop. So that's uh, just a nice quality of life addition they've put into the mouse. Fast scroll uh, with a gradual stop. So with that in mind, I think that's about it. If you found this useful, please press like. If not, please press dislike and let me know what you found unuseful about the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done already. And thank you very much. Doodles.